Nepo baby is one of those terms that has been tossed around social media for the past few months. In December 2022, the term gained widespread popularity after New York Magazine's Vulture.com published a series of articles that went deep into the topic of Nepo babies, and people haven't stopped using it since then. But is nepotism as prevalent in the K-pop industry as it is in the Western entertainment industry? The term Nepo baby is used to describe the child of successful adults who have benefited from nepotism in industries such as entertainment, fashion, or media. In contrast to self-made individuals or naturally gifted people, Nepo babies begin with an advantage, which are their parents' connections. In the K-pop industry, nepotism takes many forms, such as casting family members of established idols or actors in roles, or companies hiring the children of executives or shareholders. But even with nepotism being a very prominent issue everywhere, even in politics, it's more subtle in the K-pop industry. Nepo babies in the West are very common, as there's a chance that almost every actor or singer that you like has a famous relative who made it easier for them to get where they are. Knowing this, we should also know that the K-pop industry is no exception to nepotism. Since the industry is known to be highly competitive and the pressure to succeed is high, the nepotism affects how fair the opportunities are for the aspiring artists who don't have any connections in the industry and who will have to work twice as hard to reach the top. Nepotism compromises the credibility of the K-pop industry as it no longer promotes deserving talents, but gives these opportunities to individuals with connections or influential families, even if they aren't as talented or skilled. This can lead to the exploitation of young, vulnerable individuals who have the dream to become successful and then find out that their success is limited by their lack of connections or family ties. In some cases, trainees may feel pressured to use their connections to get ahead. The first known Nepo baby in K-pop was Sharp Sol Jiong. Her dad was the president of Yonsei University and her grandfather was a minister of national defense and president of the Korean Baseball Association. Since all of her family family members had power and money, Tiong grew up in a very wealthy background where she got everything that she ever wanted. So one day, she randomly decided to become a K-pop idol and her family did everything in their power to make her dreams come true. They established an entertainment company and then debuted Sharp, which contained four members, So Tiong herself, Yi Ji-hae, Chris, and Jung So kyun Sharp debuted in 1989 and were massively popular from the start. Their songs became number one charting hits and everyone was a fan of the co-ed concept. However, However, there were problems with the members within the group, more specifically Jiyoung and the main vocalist Yi Ji Hae. Ji Hae got into the group through an audition, even though Seo Ji Young had originally only planned on putting her friends in the group, so Ji Young was afraid that things wouldn't work out in her way, and they didn't. Even though the group was created for Ji Young herself, Ji Hae was very talented and was also getting lots of attention for her incredible vocals. So what's Ji Young's plan to resolve this? Mistreat Ji Hae. In addition to Ji Young making her life a living hell because of her jealousy, Ji Hae was also threatened and slapped by Ji Young's boyfriend and had her mom ripping her out at a broadcast hall. One day, Ji Hae had had enough and fought back, which made Ji Young's dad cancel all group schedules as he implied that his daughter had been hit by Ji Hae. The manager exposed all the mess that was going on and the group disbanded eventually, but this just shows the negative effects that nepotism can have in the industry. Those with the necessary connections may feel entitled to certain opportunities, even if they don't have any talent or potential. This, as it was shown in Sharp's case, can create an an unhealthy work environment in which the Nepo baby will feel some kind of animosity towards the other members if they're given more attention or opportunities. Another idol who was accused of nepotism was Girls Generation Sunny. If you're not aware, Sunny is the niece of Lee Suman, the founder of SM Entertainment. Her father is also a legendary vocalist in one of Korea's very first bands, Runway. She first attempted to enter the industry at her own father's agency named Star World, where she was prepared to debut as a duo with another trainee under the name Teen Top. She continued training for five years until the agency shut down. Then she auditioned for SM Entertainment, her uncle's company. In hindsight, this seems like a concrete definition of nepotism. Niece of the then CEO auditions in the company and becomes part of the biggest girl group. However, she auditioned under a different name so people wouldn't realize that she was related to Lee Suman whatsoever. In other instances, she would also be getting more opportunities and be pushed more than the other members, but that didn't happen. Even though not everyone has their father's agency to train at, she still got into SM with her own own set of skills. Tiara Sporam is also the third generation artist in line. Her father, Jong Yong Dok, is a famous singer from the 80s, and her grandparents are famous singers Hwang Hae and Baek Sol Hee. Her mother is Lee Mi Young, who is a popular actress who's still active to this day. Stacey Si Eun is also the daughter of veteran singer and former actor Park Nam Jong. B2B's Hyun Sik is the son of legendary folk singer Im Di Hoon. La Seraphim's Taewon is the child of theater actress Lee Ran Hee, and so on. There are also idols who are children of incredibly rich people 
people, CEOs, and directors like Super Junior Shiwan, Twice's Tui, 2PM's Nikun, B2B Songjae, Girls' Generation Suyong, but even though their connections aren't directly tied with the entertainment industry, it might have probably been easier for them. Now, we can't say that these idols got into the industry because of their connections or because of their famous relatives. We've all seen these idols on stage, and we know that they worked incredibly hard to debut and keep working hard every day. But we can't say that it wasn't easier for them in the general sense of speaking. If an idol is rich, it can provide a greater sense of security in case their idol career doesn't take off. This means that they don't have to worry much and will have less anxiety about choosing a safe career path from the outset. Additionally, the financial stability can allow them to take classes and invest in their training before auditioning. They also have more opportunities to network and gain access to industry insiders through these outside classes, but again, that's not exactly nepotism. More recent examples of idols being accused of nepotism was the debut of Lauren. Lauren first got attention as the love interest in Blackpink's Love Sick Girls and as a friend of the members, but got even more attention when it was found out that he was the son of Naver's founder. He has worked with the Black label before, as he is credited as a producer on G-Dragon's 2017 song Bullshit and as a lyricist on Blackpink's Pretty Savage, You Never Know, and Love Sick Girls. Surprisingly, he owns his own company under the Black label, which is called Fire Exit Records. He also made his debut in 2020 with Empty Trash, which took many people by surprise. Even though nobody can deny that he's talented, it would be naive to say that his father being Naver's founder didn't have anything to do with the quick progression of his career. Espa's Giselle was also rumored to have debuted through nepotism. Her aunt was rumored to be Toto He, the director of the Soul branch of ABC News in the US. Doohee has also had dating rumors with none other than Lee Suman, which led netizens to believe that Giselle got in the company and Espa because of who her aunt was dating. Her wealthy background and the fact that she only trained for 11 months before debuting didn't help her case much. A netizen commented, I can't believe even a company as big as SM is debuting kids through connections like this. It's not fair to the other trainees who work hard and build up years of experience. These rumors were never confirmed though, so Giselle was catching straight over unconfirmed speculations. Not to mention that she got into SM Entertainment through Sunday auditions, which are notoriously hard to pass. Even with the limited examples of nepotism existing in the K-pop industry, we can't deny that it exists. More often than not, instances of nepotism are subtle and difficult to identify, while others are more blatant and don't leave much room for discussion. Ultimately, it's up to the higher-ups and the companies in the industry to decide whether or not to prioritize connections over talent and potential, which they mostly don't. After all, the industry is a business like any other, and they will always put the money as their priority. But the issue of nepotism in K-pop should definitely be more addressed by others. To address the issue of nepotism in K-pop, the industry needs to become more transparent and merit-based. To ensure a fair system, the K-pop industry should prioritize promotions and opportunities for individuals based on their skills and talents instead of their connections. This requires fostering an inclusive environment that embraces novel voices and diverse perspectives. Such an approach can lead to a more vibrant and diverse industry that is better able to represent the needs and interests of its audience. Knowing the world we live in and how much K-pop is changing in these recent years, it's not very likely that the issue of nepotism will stop soon, but we can hope, right? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Bye guys!